We're back. Time for another edition of the Carolina Insider. Jones and Adam here with you, coming to you a day later than we normally do, where we recap the entire weekend for the Tar Heels. But really, this is just a Carolina in total recap, because, of course, there was basketball on Tuesday night, which we will get to momentarily. Adam, good day, sir. I'm ready. Let's do it. Tar Heels end up getting the victory over Boston College in the latest action. The final score 72-64. That followed up a road win against Louisville on Saturday, a 21-point victory for Carolina. Adam, felt these two games felt very different. Saturday's game against Louisville was relatively low stress after a first five or six minutes. Carolina used a big run before halftime to get a double-digit lead led by more than 20 uh, in the second half. Whereas Tuesday night in the Smith Center, much more of a grinded out kind of a fight against Boston College where very physical, not a ton of offense, a lot of stoppages of play, those kind of things as Carolina ends up winning by eight. Luckily, Carolina had Armando Baycott. <laughs> in both games. In both games, yeah. Against Boston College, Armando ties Billy Cunningham's school record with his 60th double-double this time with coming with 20 points, 16 rebounds. Armando just ripping pages out of the Carolina basketball record book and writing his name in there. The next record he's chasing, Tyler Hansbury, 16 rebounds short of tying Tyler's all-time Tar Heel rebounding record. And Carolina's needed every one of them. Those rebounds were a big deal against Boston College. Carolina dominates the second chance points, 19-3 to against the Eagles, and just does enough to win against an outman Boston College team. In the Louisville game, big storyline was Carolina's bench play. Puff Johnson actually started the game, but of course has traditionally uh, been a reserve for the Tar Heels. DeMarco Dunn had career highs in points and rebounds. Tar Heels did not get that same production from the bench in the game against Boston College. But luckily, not only did they have Armando Baycott, they had another Tar Heel. Adam, I kind of feel like kind of quietly is putting together some terrific stretch of play, and that's R.J. Davis in both games played very well. R.J. Davis was really the only player in the Carolina-Boston College game who could shoot from beyond the three-point line. He finishes up with 18 points, made some big ones, including some that he created for himself on a night when there were not many Tar Heel assists to go around. R.J. said he just he feels good about his shot right now. I don't know that R.J. ever feels bad about his shot at any point in time. Tar Heels have a couple players like that. Uh, but right now, they're going in. He's an important part of the Carolina offense. And that Bench Jones mentioned... They're not all doing it every single night, but you feel like each night you might get a contribution from one of them. Right. Puff Johnson now with seven straight positive games and plus or minus uh, the longest current strength of any Tar Heel. So Carolina now 13 and six overall, five and three in the ACC. Coming into the week, Clemson was atop the ACC and undefeated. And then there were eight teams with either two or three losses after that. So it is a jumbled midsection, top to middle of the ACC. So every one of these games can create some separation. Everyone feels important. And uh, Carolina back at home against State, Adam State, uh, as hot as any team in the ACC right now. They won again on Tuesday night, winning in Atlanta against Georgia Tech. You know, they'll be excited to see the Tar Heels. Tar Heels will be excited to see them. Should be a fun atmosphere on Saturday afternoon. Be hard to imagine two more different games than Carolina Boston College and Carolina NC State. You know, the pack is going to be very freewheeling. They're going to shoot a lot of three point shots. They're going to potentially be able to, you could exploit them defensively. But it'll be a much more lively atmosphere in the Smith Center, and the Tar Heels are going to need every single bit of that because they need to play better than they did against BC. Worth mentioning, Boston College did not make a three-pointer in this game. They only took six. First time since 1990 against Jacksonville that an opponent has not made a three. I believe it was 1,149 games between those two games that uh, a Tar Heel opponent went without making a three-point shot. Is that the Fighting Cardinals? Not the Fighting Cardinals. They would have hit some threes. Those were the Jacksonville Dolphins that, uh, that missed all those threes. I think a young Eric Montross was on that team. I believe that was his freshman year. No he, wonder they didn't make it. Yeah, he was three. swatting them all away. All right, let's uh, turn our eyes to women's basketball, who, by the way, Deja Kelly is going to join us tomorrow in our guest spot here on the video pod. So look forward to that. Adam and I had a great conversation with Deja. And Adam, Deja, and the rest of the Tar Heel women's team, another couple big wins this past week. They went on the road, beat Virginia. It was the first time the Cavaliers had lost at home this season. Follow that up with yet another highly ranked team, NC State this time, that falls to the heels third top 15 opponent that Carolina's beaten this season. And fourth ranked team overall as the Tar Heels got a really strong fourth quarter against NC State. Outscores the pack 25 to 15. Destiny Adams 
a big part of that fourth quarter. Kennedy Todd Williams scores 15 points, a Jacksonville Cardinal. Yeah, oh yeah. And Alyssa Usby with 18 big rebounds. Uh, Tario's just really playing well at home right now, and that is very timely because they'll be at home again tomorrow night against a much improved Duke team, Devils of 16 and 1. Tario's had a sold out crowd against NC State and Carmichael that made a difference on Sunday. Need something similar against Duke. So Duke and then Georgia Tech after that also in Carmichael. Then the Hills have four of their next five on the road. So important to grab some of those home victories if you can. That atmosphere has made a difference for sure. That is 8 o'clock on Thursday night, Carolina and Duke women's basketball in Carmichael. Let's stick on some women's sports. Let's move to women's tennis. Adam, I mean, perennially one of the best teams in the nation. And again, they're ranked number two in the nation. 4-0 and starting the year with four wins over in-state opponents. Some of the big notes from these wins include Brian Calvis picking up his 500th win as the head coach of the Tar Heels. He now has 501 of them in total against just 101 defeats. Just an incredible career for Brian Calvis in part because he's been able to build such incredible depth. Tar Heels played a lot of players in those four wins and amassed a 25 and three record overall in those matches. You got to see the Carolina debut of Abby Forbes, a transfer from UCLA. You got to see a top freshman, Reese Brantmeyer, who made her Carolina debut on Monday and got a win. That was after she spent the weekend in Naples, Florida, and won a pro event with Tar Heel alum McKenna Jones. So the Tar Heels are stacked again and should, again, contend for not just the ACC, but for the national championship. The set totals in those four wins, 25 to 3. Carolina outscoring its uh, four opponents. And that was, as Adam alluded to, playing a lot of depth, having a lot of different lineups to allow a bunch of people to play here early in the season. From the women to the guys, they opened their season at the Alan Morris Invitational this weekend. That's just an individual event. There's no team scores, but the Tar Heels uh, felt like they competed very well there. They do open their dual match season coming up against a couple of in-state opponents facing Campbell and North Carolina Central. And also, Adam, former audio pod guest, former men's tennis member here Carolina. Rinky Hijikata won a five setter in the Australian Open to move on to round two. Rinky on the audio pod in September of 2022 might have been September the 9th and then he played early this morning East Coast time uh, in a night match that he was really excited about uh, there in Australia. So getting getting some great matches and some great experience early on for a young Tar Heel. Let's finish things up with wrestling and gymnastics. On the wrestling side, Carolina went up to the Northeast, swept Harvard and Brown this past weekend. They are now into ACC dual season. That starts Friday in Durham against Duke and gymnastics. No competition this week, but a couple individual Tar Heels getting recognized. Julia Noer uh, named the Eagle gymnast last year, the Eagle. Tar Heels join the ACC next year with uh, Clemson uh, creating a uh, gymnastics team. But the Eagle right now, Julia Noer, the Eagle Conference Gymnast of the Week, and Lolly Dekanoidza named the Specialist of the Week as well. All right. A couple big things coming up. Women's basketball against Duke Thursday night, 8 o'clock in Carmichael. Don't forget, Adam and I will talk to Deja Kelly. That's tomorrow on the video pod. And then men's basketball against NC State. Weird time. It's a 5 o'clock Saturday time. We're on the air at 4 p.m. Adam, tip-off club? Tip-off <laughs> club, 3 o'clock on Saturday. It's a party on the lawn out here in front of the Smith Center uh, leading up to that Carolina and NC State game. Come on by. Have a good time. Get yourself mentally prepared for the heels in the pack. Don't bring your NC State friends to the game. Bring Tar Heels to the Smith Center. Yeah. Adam's already fired up. Yeah, we need to go before truth. he says something he regrets. We'll see you next time on the Carolina Insider.